We no afraid, we no see no one where we afraid of. We no afraid, we no see no one where we afraid of. Yeah, this is Everton Blender. And it's all about the young police from Jamaica. Seeing young police channel. Big up yourself. Everton Blender said that. We no afraid, we no see no one where we afraid of. Blessed love, Rastafari. <laughs> Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. To our loyal viewers, subscribers and Patreon members. At the channel, we are a group of law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. But not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because they save lives. This is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives at this channel. We at the channel aid criminals with a passion and do not want them over here. We do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you. Over here, we want you to go to prison or the departure lounge at Madden. Moving on to today's video yeah so this is part two yes part two of two of the two-part series yes of the x6 um case finally come to a close all of the corrupt detective them they're all dead now so um this case is over you know some people you know you, you you're gonna hear oh some of these policemen oh they are you know come to make them their demise we don't know if it's divine intervention or what, but all we know that justice, you know, the victim, because what these policemen did was unconscionably evil and wicked. Or if you do something like that, betray your badge. So you watch, you listen, and you decide. And thanks to those who, who have um, joined our Patreon squad. So you watch, you listen, and you decide. Constable finally noted, if you are out there, him out there with you two, they don't come as good as him anymore. Well, I sure would have said that. Buddha was no coward police and them thing. Bad police, you know. But that not stop from him being corrupt. It seemed like most of the hard working police them in Jamaica are always corrupt. Very rare you find someone corrupt. Because, boy, I mean, there are some things about some people. Eh? I didn't know me a young police and man, may I tell you, them terrible man, me I, <laughs> me I tell you, terrible. So, Deputy Commissioner of Police Clifford Blake, whose office was lo located next to Buddha's, expressed his grief saying, This one's thing bad, reflecting the deep sense of loss felt by those who knew him best. So, I see him on the see him Blake, the parochy and the funeral. I make you see the video again. You understand? So the, at the time now you have a woman in here, Navlet Grant, Deputy Commissioner of Police, she was there also highlight Buddha's generous nature's nature remarking generosity seemed to be a part of Mr. Buddha's DNA. She praises unwavering commitment to the JCF and his supportive nature towards his colleagues, emphasizing that he's always gave his best to the organization. So them turning on the brother when he Bobby Montague now, he was the Minister of National Security. So him say extend his condolences to Buddha's family, acknowledging the impact of his service to the nation. He assured that the Ministry of National Security would support the family during this difficult time and work to honor Buddha's legacy within the law enforcement community. So Buddha's sudden death has not only left a void in the JCF but also sparked conver Conversation about the circumstances surrounding this passing as the force mourned the loss of a leader who never lost touch with the ordinary policeman, his legacy, as dedicated a frontline officer and a compassionate leader will remember by all who had the privilege to serve alongside him. So let me tell you now, I'm gonna say it already now and I'm thinking you know, to people and um, police officer. This when you come on to Viagra and all and see Alice and all of them something if you you know, make your soldier get hard and all them things because a lifestyle. For you take them things there, you, know, you forgot to doctor, you know. I tell people already, because like for, like for years truly you now, we have uh, we, 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 we live, we have everything there. We have with doctor, we have pharmacy, we have everything. Yeah, we have a clinic. We're not in a hospital here, so all them things there. 
normal you, you understand when you're in a hospital so if anything on him something there you have to admit you don't, don't know I, I, although a private hospital there's a certain wing on it to say people serving a military active duty because active duty be something and, you understand but like when i was in a california now we have our own hospital and everything but in i see him still anything happen to you you know you know so i see him um you know military doctor them are take care of you and you understand and at the VA and you know even the clinic, them advise you not to take them medication unless you get um, for, you know for make your soldier get hard, not to take these medication without um, consulting with the doctor. So you know, so just get up and just you know take no, the medication. Like, you know, you were dead. And um, yeah, I see him thinking killer brother of me and most killer team named Courtney Oliver Dial. Yeah, man. You know, it'd see him on lick him and him thing. Him go take the um, take the Viagra and I'd see him on lick him and go sleep and him go wake up. You can't take them medication there unless your doctor clear you. You have to do heart check and all kind of things. But you don't know people always want to. Uh, some people always see say boy the rules don't apply to them. You have to understand say medicine. Yeah, you can't play with them thing there. Cause everything have side effects. So I just, I saw Buddha dead and them thing there. So him, he was the first one out of all I three corruptors them for dead after them cover up the case. So second one was a tragic death of retired deputy superintendent of police, Lyde Pachagria Wilson. Yeah. And left hand police, also known as Willow, has left law enforcement community in shock. Most people, many people couldn't believe so boy, this a man would have killed himself. Bad police still do, you know. But you have to understand, sir. Him kill himself right after a day, after a commissioner of police dead, Lucius Thomas. So they mean I say, boy, we are telling them, say, him and Lucius Thomas and Meveral Smith, all three of them, you know, them involving in them rear admiral behavior and them thing there. And so apparently the commissioner of police is dead the day before. So, you know, know, them I say, boy, because I'm, I'm, I'm lover. He must take free money, he must um, check in him ticket and uh, use him own gun and you know make sure him, him secure him ticket at the departure lounge. So Wilson, yeah, Patrick here was a well was a respected figure in the Jamaica Constabulary phone, was found dead at his Wellington Heights, Kingston Six home. In what police are suspecting to be a case of side, you know what I'm saying? A sudden passing has raised questions about the pressure and struggle faced by officers even in retirement. So Patrick was 61, so you understand. Had a long and distinguished career serving at various capacities within the force, including his tenure at Kinson Central Police Station and his work with the elite flying squad. Known for his dedication to duty and commitment to upholding the law, Wilson was a well-regarded figure among his peer, peers. His experience in dealing with some of the most challenging criminal cases made him a respected and knowledgeable presence in the field. So, as I hear them say, they might praise him and all them things, but this is the man that the murder happened in his police area, Kingston Central Police area, and then moved the crime scene from there to St. Andrew North to Parra Campbell. So, you have to understand that if you're not corrupt enough, so the Prime Minister, Portia Simpson, through Budo, they met the link, so they know, say, all right, patch agree. We don't know where Patrick, how much millions him get out of it for move it. So everybody get money in you know, it. Because this money is rotten rich in you know. Money and a fiend problem because him rotten. Patrick Powell. So they move it, he move the crime scene and it over to um to um him and, and over the crimes and over the case to Paro Campbell and from there then you know bigger food get in five and one whole other thing. So it forced Paro Kiyama to retire in, a, in public interest. Yeah, man, Bigger Four did that. And Bigger Four does at him funeral. So the man, the call still doing you know. it. Yes. So I can't report the tragic incident unfold while Wilson was at home with two family members and the murder load ex explosion emanating from an upstairs bedroom, prompting immediate concern. The police were called to the scene. Upon arrival, they discovered that the bedroom door was locked. In their efforts to reach Wilson, the officers forcibly kick open the door and navigate through a closet to access the bathroom. Inside the bathroom, they found Wilson in a seated position on the floor near to the toilet, clad in a grey t-shirt and underwear with a single gunshot wound to the centre 
of his forehead. Wow. Firearm was found on the floor next to him. And one special case was recovered nearby, suggesting a close range shot. The circumstances surrounding this death is still being investigated, but initial findings point to a suspected side. You know what I mean by that? So Wilson death has sparked a wave of sadness and introspection within the JCF. For a man who dedicated his life to fighting crime and protecting others, this tragic, tragic end has highlighted the unseen burdens that law enforcement officers often carry, even beyond the years of active service. Mental health and the well-being of police officers are issues that have come under increased scrutiny and Wilson's death serves as a stark reminder of the importance of addressing these concerns. The Jamaica Constabulary Force Corporate Communication Unit has confirmed the reports and investigations into the exact circumstances of his death are ongoing. Wilson's legacy as a committed officer with a wealth of experience from his time in high stake unit like the flying squad remain firmly intact but his untimely death raises important conversations about support system for those in the force but i want to know from me i'm going to you know not care what happened to you you don't take your own life because once you do that you know say you're not going to see god face you don't know say nothing satan want nothing to do this so they have to bury you a certain way so colleagues and friends have expressed their disbelief and sorrow over wilson's passing Remember him as a steadfast officer who always faced challenges head on. His contribution to the force, especially during his time with specialized units tasked with combating organized crime, would not be forgotten. A whole heap of boy, the man I said, like departure, Patrick, Patrick yeah, we are telling you, and an ordinary police. So we don't know, you know, what, um, we don't know what might transpire. Why not go through his brain, why him do that, to take him on, you know, to send himself to the departure lounge. You understand, but as we can tell you, you know, you can't, as I'm saying, you can't, you cannot prejudge what somebody is going through. You know, you, you know, you might can't manage certain things and then everybody can't manage it, but you can't manage somebody else's cards, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm a weakness, you understand? Although with that one, say, boy, I treat him weak, that's why I do that kind of thing there. We don't know, so you know, we can't assume, say, you know, you understand what I'm saying, but some people say, boy, it's because I. The X6 case and you know, him did look on the youth and him thing and him know him do. And all of them things they kinda of ride him and you know and I just say it go. And the, you, you understand. So So as investigation um, continue, Wilson bring Wilson's passing bring to a light the silent struggle faced by many in law enforcement. His story serves as a call to action for greater awareness and support for mental health resources within the police force, ensuring that men and women who risk their lives in service to the nation receive the care and attention they deserve, both during and after their careers. Yeah, so, I just saw it go. Boy, when I was in the police force, whenever I used to have no um, psychologists or psychiatrists and whenever I used to have no counsel and nobody to talk to and all them things, you understand? So, they have all of them things now. You know, them, I try to modernize the police force. But I mean, you do believe, say, old time policing, much better. You understand? Because, yeah, you know, see, you know, you, 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 you understand? You just do your work, you know, you love it. But now, you know, they might turn it into some baby business, you know. So, the last man you now, yeah, man, the man, the mastermind behind the cover up, because him now, Power Camera, the one where disposed of the man, gun. Because, man, Patrick Paul got prison because I gun, you know, they couldn't find a gun. Because, Power Camera was one of the disposed of the gun. So we don't see Patrick Powell at him funeral, we don't know if he was there. You understand? But we, you understand what I'm saying. So he my last one now, so he last man and him gone. Yeah, so retired detective deputy superintendent of police, Alta Mart Paro Campbell, had passed away while undergoing brain surgery at a hospital in Jamaica, marking the end of a long and storied career in law enforcement. Campbell a seasoned detective with decades of experience in the Jamaica Constabulary Force. And the man, he used to the radication. Radication, that was PN and police detective used to be there. Yeah, man, the man, the departure long specialist, you know, it was a unit that was formed by Edward Siaga. Anytime the man they come for you, yeah, man, you don't know, say, you're two foot, the man show through the, in a trunk. Yeah, man, so people are going to say a dead man that tonight, a dead men. 
that have for them speciality. PMP criminal organization, I want to say, want to get criminal dignity. So you put them in a, in a vehicle and all them something. Matt Millan come in with that. So we have a policy for a long time. A man dead, yeah, you put him in a trunk or a vehicle. And you understand? But you know, lock the trunk. You make him put them hang out and all them things there. You understand? You suppose to ask police, yeah, after a shooting, you check a man's pulse to say, find out if him dead. And the police work here and, and things say a man dead and them things there. And, you know, you have some man where police in a shooting with them. And then reach a KP, them jump up and say them they're dead. Them pretend dead upon the police. Police then check them pulse and for some reason or another, them fees say them never feel no pulse or them not check it. Them fees say boy, because the man get how much headshot him dead. And as some man dead and them things, you have to check him pulse. Yeah, you understand? So I just saw it go. So, yeah, so Power Camel him dead now and I grow surgery you now, I'm a brain tumor. I just saw it go. You understand? So, he was a well-known figure in a fight against crime, earning both respect and recognition for his contribution to policing in the country. So he suddenly it has left the law enforcement community and his family, grappling with the loss of a man who dedicated his life to serving justice. But justice to who? Or to the rich. So Altamart Campbell, you know, widely known by his nickname Paro. I don't know him junk and all them things. I built a reputation as a relentless detective who approaches work with a level of dedication and tenacity. I set him apart from his peers. His career was marked by his deep involvement in solving high profile criminal cases and his leadership in guiding young officers in investigative techniques. Campbell's influence in the JCF extended beyond the rank as he was often regarded as a mentor and pillar of knowledge in the criminal investigation division. So, I worked with him briefly and him thing there. The man I know me as a street, uh, you know, as a street, street police and him have that respect for me and him thing there, but me and him wasn't a friend, because I not like thief in police, so I saw now me and him naked, you know, when we weren't friends, because I can't tell him that they were a thief, because they were involved in the hijacking, I chucked them in a St. Andrew South Police here and care people got a river town in which I police them were benefiting from it. So sometimes crime happening in I people them police here. That's why people they don't trust the police. Police involved. Cause you know people were like saying, oh the police them can't catch them and I will hijack the chuck them. Because they were given the criminal them information in time they, the patrol team them when the patrol team them change. When you know when they might change and all of these things. And then worse now, you know say detective them are like Bank tellers, customer service, yeah, so them call it now. You understand? So, the circumstances surrounding this is that have steered a sense of sorrow and reflection within the police force. One thing we know is that in a Jamaica, once them go upon your head, you don't know, say, you can't call it, you're gone. I don't know nobody in Jamaica who do no head surgery and live. Everybody who know how to do it dead. So, I only make them touch me their long stick down there. You understand? So, we give thanks for where we are. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so. Campbell was undergoing a delicate brain surgery when complications arose leading to his ultimate demise. I doctor them killing him because I didn't know the mother. And in my first or second or third, every Jamaican I know I do head surgery or Jamaica dead. I don't like somebody come and tell me, say, hey boy, I do head surgery or Jamaica and me live. I don't know I can't point to one person. I'm a, I'm a young man. I'm a big man. I tell you that. So, so the procedure was meant to address a critical health issue. But despite the best efforts of the medical team, he did not survive. His death during such a high-risk operation underscored the fragility of life, even for those who have faced countless dangers in, the line, in their line of duty. Campbell's passing has not only left a void within his family, but also within the broader policing community that looked up to him as a beacon of strength and expertise. And yeah, we, have, we do have video already about him, you know, in terms of the young police who did um, the pepper spray. You know, and we come out with it, we support the young police, and you hear some dummy and them things, because I show them a parochial black friend, they don't split justice. Because parochial black was even threatening the policeman, the young, yeah. And we, you know, look here, we don't care, you know, we, we're a man that does just, we don't deal with family or friend justice, you know, justice we deal with. And parochial behavior was unsatisfactory with the young police. I don't have to do this corporate and behave, but through, through him and old police and him, I saw them used to treat police, them now, and I respect and them thing there. Because how dare him to stop him. 
No, I know. So I have never have any problem with a policeman stopping me when me a police. Me always compliant and me you know, never in a spot with no police. But so some police, you like say them a god and you're supposed to know them and me never do that. Me treat them, me treat police and me treat people like how oh, I want to be treated. So, yeah, so his colleague, Paroki and my colleagues, remember him as a man of sharp intellect whose investigated skills were instrumental in cracking some of the toughest cases in Jamaica. So his nickname, Paro, Paro, became synonymous with the precision and persistence reflecting his method, methodical approach in unraveling even the most complex criminal network. Throughout his career, Campbell was known for his no-nonsense attitude and his unwavering commitment to justice. Yeah, so in the nineties, you know, two boys had to chat him in an hour here and I once be a police here, one of them near Waterbound. I don't remember the other one name, but a boy them when come from Roston. Them uh them just shot him. Two shot him to get so that's why I did walk with a limp. But the boy them, him not even did you know him did get for fire back, but he never did lit none of them. But the boy them less than two weeks after that cause sent and just out that you know, straight to the departure down. I just saw it go. You can't shoot police and them thing there and then no, you're not gonna prison for that. In a south, but then yeah, you shoot police now and come uh, straight out of the party alone. Yeah, I yeah, just saw it go. So, Paro Campbell earned the respect of both his colleagues and adversaries alike with a reputation of being tough but fair. His work often brought him face to face with some of Jamaica's most dangerous criminals. Yet, he remained steadfast in his mission of bringing lawbreakers to justice regardless of the risk involved. So, Altamart. Campbell's legacy extend beyond his accomplishments in solving crimes. It lies in the lives he touched, the careers he shaped, and the standards he set for investigative work within the JCF. He was a mentor to many young officers who admired his dedication to upholding the rule of law and his ability to lead with integrity. His influence is likely to be felt for years to come as those he train continue to draw upon the lessons they learn from him. Yeah, so you have people me know on them thing there where me and them train and Paro Kembla like God to them and them thing there and but me, hey look here, I don't want to ball to no guy now, I don't care. Me I just start the truth and them thing there. I never sanitize no man record and say boy you decide that. Them man ain't a thief because I work with them. Me I tell you, I just saw it go. Anytime I say a police are thief, that means I'm dishonest. That's how it really means. That means that him not believe in a upholding the law. As the same as thief. So I just use one word for all of the ones that were involved in a corruption. I just call them thief. <laughs> that dishonesty. You understand? Yeah. So some people know, you know, they want to say, um, you know, Separa Campbell legacy extend beyond his accomplishments in solving crimes. It lies in the lives he touched, the career he shaped and the standard is set for investigative work within the JCF. He was a mentor to many young officers who admire his dedication to upholding the rule of law and his ability to lead with integrity. His influence is likely to be felt for years to come as though he's, those he trained continue to draw upon the lessons they learned from him. His death also brought to light the pressures faced by those in law enforcement even after their active service year, years are over. The mental and physical toll of decades spent in, in such a demanding role is often hidden from public view. Campbell's situation serves as a reminder of the need for ongoing support for retired officers who contribu whose contributions to society do not end when they leave the force. So as the GSCF and the nation mourned the loss of DSP Altamart Paro Campbell tributes pour in from colleagues and friends and former associates who recall his professionalism, courage and dedication to justice. His passing through critical medical procedures is a poignant end to the life of a man who stood resolute in the face of danger throughout his career. While his physical presence may be gone, the legacy he built in the hours of the JCF and the hearts of those he mentored will endure in a testament in the enduring year. So I'll tell you now, so the action of these three detectives, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Wintroy Budo, Deputy Superintendent of Police, Pachagre, 
and parochy and rep represent a betrayal of their sworn duty to serve and protect. Their conduct can only be described as reprehensible, depraved, wicked and vile. They acted in direct contradiction to the principle they pledged to uphold as officers of the law choosing instead to protect, protect the powerful and corrupt Neglecting the protocols they were duty bound to follow, their deeds serve as a grim reminder of how just the justice system can be perverted when those in power use their influence to manipulate those meant to enforce the law. Sir Porter, who had personal knowledge and professional experience with Budo and Campbell, has made it clear that while these men wore the uniform, not all of them embodied the values that the badge represent. While Winthrop Budo was one considered an honorable officer, his involvement in the web of corruption tied to political elite changed his trajectory. Serving under the leadership of the then Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller, Budo found himself in a position where his principles were compromised. His role as a law enforcement officer became secondary to his allegiance to those in power ultimately leading to his participation in acts that directly contravene his oath of office. So that's why I tell you, say, if you're not corrupt, nobody can corrupt you. Nobody can get me to do that. Because no man for you lose him life and all of them things. You have to understand him as a murder. You know? How you do that? You have kids to him something. So that's why sometimes you have some policemen, them pitney. Even them police, them pitney dead under some circumstances. You have to wonder if I sin at the father or the mother. That's why you have to just do good. God, you know, God is a good and just God, you know, you have to remember that, you know. You understand? So if you go back in your Bible and even know about the Egyptian and how God, you know, the, God tell the angel, tell the people, them say, boy, if you mark them door with a certain sign with blood and all them things, you know. And when God passed away, God just killed all of the, all of the other people, them pit, you know. So I got that. So what I'm not even to believe. Uh, you understand? And people, I said, but they never do God nothing. Them wicked, because God wants to make sure, you know, the, you cut it out from the stem, yeah, when you don't want it to grow. Yeah, yeah, you take it out from the bud. You understand? So Budu was under the influence of, of um, Simpson Miller alongside equally complicit DSP parochy and follow an illegal directive to assist covering up the murder of Kajil Mears, a young man whose life was tragically cut short. These officers, instead of pursuing justice, choose to use their position to manipulate the case and protect the interests of businessman Patrick Powell. So despite Powell being abroad when the crime committed, Budden and Campbell presents at the Norman Manny International Airport to personally receive him upon his return, demonstrate their commitment to shielding him from the consequences of his alleged involvement in the crime. And some people say, so oh, you know all of them things there. We are all detectives and them things there. Holy Papa Police are Jamaica. Even though them don't know me, them trust me because them know people talk about me and them thing there. Say, so, I just saw him stay. I saw that brother did stay. Him no all no qualms in nobody. Him tell you as it is. You understand? So police, you know, be upon that. A whole heap of police share. And we even talk with witness. We talk with two of the youth. Them were the day or the night when them, but them not was a witness. Them not getting a statement. Because them realized what was happening. Because when them, them frightening time, them she said the shooting happened. Say it happened uptown. Even the boy, the killer, knows say another say it happened. But hey, I three people him killing you know, her and get away with it. So this action led by Campbell and Budo was not a lapse in judgment, but a calculated move to obstruct justice, ensuring that the powerful remain untouchable. It's a stark example of how the machinery of justice can be derailed. When those tasked with upholding the law become complicit in its subversion, their participation in this cover-up was not merely a breach of protocol. It was a deliberate act to deceive the public and deny the victims some of the justice they deserve. So now all of them dead. So I just saw it go. So Altamart Power Campbell history as a detective is now forever stained by his criminal activities under the guise of law enforcement. Described as a criminal in uniform, Campbell's loyalty was not to the people of Jamaica or the principle of justice, but to his own self-serving agenda and to those who wielded influence over him. His actions reveal a pattern of behavior 
that was more aligned with the interests of the corrupt and the criminal underworld than with the noble calling of policing. The harsh reality is that individuals like Budo and Campbell exemplify a fundamental truth about corruption. It's thrive only when people are willing to be compromised. So reporter rightly points out that if a person is not inherently corrupt, no external force can compel them to act on it unethically. The willingness to engage in corrupt practices speaks to a deeper flaw in character. A readiness to abandon one's principle when faced with the allure of power or pressure from influential figures. The legacy of Buddha, Campbell, and Wilson is not one of service or honor, but a disgrace and betrayal. Their willingness to protect the rich and powerful at the expense of truth and justice has left a dark mark on Jamaican constabulary force and serve as a stark reminder of how the law can be twisted when those who enforce it fail to uphold its tenets. Their actions not only robbed Kajil Mir's family of justice, but also undermined the public's faith in the very institution meant to safeguard their rights. This betrayal of the public trust calls for a thorough reckoning, reckoning within the law enforcement community and beyond. It is not enough to remember these officers for their past secret, the truth about their actions must be laid bare. Their story is a cautionary tale of how those who are supposed to be gatekeepers of justice can, under the wrong influence, become its greatest saboteur. The people of Jamaica deserve transparency, accountability and a commitment that no one, no matter how powerful, stand above the law. As Sir Porter has repeatedly emphasized to his audience, the greatest enemies to the people of Jamaica are not just the criminals in the street, but also those in position of power and influence, particularly the individuals with degrees and titles, and the Jamaican Gleaner, along with other mainstream media outlets. These entities which should serve as watchdogs of society and all those powerful, accountable, have instead became, become complicit in perpetuating corruption and misinformation. So reporter point critique challenges the role of the media and educated elites in maintaining a system that serves the interests of the powerful rather than seeking truth and justice for ordinary citizens. If these so-called professionals had carried out a thorough journalistic investigation with diligence and integrity, that their role demands, they would have uncovered the critical evidence proving that Patrick Powell was off the island when Kajil Mays' murder took place. Instead, the media failed to scrutinize and expose the inconsistencies in the case, allowed a false narrative to take root, shielding the powerful and condemning the victim to a distorted version of justice. Their lack of rigorous investigative Reporting represent more than just journalistic negligence. It's a betrayal of the very principle that journalism is built on. These people are not journalists. They are activists, opinionators, commenters. They are not journalists. The Jamaican media, Jamaican media, along with the Jamaican Glean and other media outlets, had the responsibility to dig deeper, to question the official story, and to pursue the truth without fear or affection. We have to understand it because I PMP criminal organization, majority of them, you know, them align with them, them benefit from it. You know. They are the same one you know, who can get a ghetto youth to kill them rival or kill someone. So that's why they perpetuate criminality. They don't want a just society. They don't want a society where everybody can live and equally be judged under the law. No. They may believe you know, that because they are criminal. We are telling that, you know. tell you that all the time. You understand? They had a duty to challenge the narrative being spun by those in power and to hold the police, politicians and judicial system accountable for their actions. Yet, they chose the path of silence or superficial coverage, either turning a blind eye to the evidence or willingness particip willingly participating in the cover-up to protect the interests of the elite. This complicity 
raise serious concern about the credibility and integrity of the media in Jamaica. Sir Porter's frustration lies in the fact that those with degrees, lawyers, journalists, academics and other professionals are often perceived as a gatekeeper of truth and justice. Yet, in reality, they frequently use their knowledge and influence to manipulate outcomes, suppress evidence and reinforce the power structure that benefit the corrupt. They wield their education not as a tool of enlightenment or advocacy for the people, but as a weapon to obscure the truth and defense the indefensible. When the educated class aligns itself with corruption, it creates an environment that lies, flourish and justice is systematically denied. The case of Patrick Powell is a stark example of this systemic failure. The media, instead of investigating the facts surrounding Powell's whereabouts at the time of the murder, allowed themselves to be used as instruments to perpetuate a narrative designed to absolve the powerful of wrongdoing. The truth that Powell was off the island when Kajil Mears was killed should have been a pivotal point in the investigation. One that could have shifted the direction of the case entirely. Instead, it was buried under layers of misinformation and institutional indifference, leaving the public to question who they can trust. I just tell the Jamaican people before and I say it again, your biggest enemy are the Jamaican Glean right now in Jamaica. If you notice, I live in the United States of America and I can go back and research things online about the United States of America even before it become an independent country. We are talking about them have um, media outlet then, no uh, um, newspaper no and it's, you see it in a real them. mama papa time. In a Jamaica, no, not that. You have to pay for it. So they want to keep the people them ignorant. They don't want them to know them history. Because if the people know them history, especially the ones that can read or understand things, even the ones that can read, because the ones that can't read, the ones that can read, would have showed them and said, this is it, and read it out to them. So they deliberately make sure that the people them have to pay to see the information when a history. They don't love poor people. I said, my enemy is poor, and the poor don't understand. That's why we tell you that all the time. The Jamaican Glean are the biggest enemy of poor people. You understand? Yes. We don't stop fight for you. We don't stop fight for this in the cars. You have to understand, say, this is our this are where we come from, you know. We need to string cut at Jamaica. You understand? We never born nowhere else. No matter what, what passport we travel with, we always have a Jamaican at art. We loyalty lies where we where we at because I will owe to take. We can't change that. Because I saw you want it and them thing there, because we never say, you know, we'd have love to be, be in a Jamaica but we'd have to leave because of corruption and a PMP criminal organization. And then you have people who you know were were in a police was were corrupt like them thief like what? And them have powers. Yeah man. You have a guy with the name of Talbert White in the dark West Kingston. Yeah, man, them. I tell you, you're not even know, man. Corruption rampant in our police force. If you have connected to politics. So how can we, the people of Jamaica, place our faith in a system that is so deeply broken and riddled with corruption? When the media fail to ask the tough questions and instead align itself with those it should be holding accountable, it becomes clear that the system is not designed to serve the truth. This betrayal by the media is a fundamental breach of social contract. They have chosen their allegiance to power over their duty to the people. Trust in the justice system and the institution that are meant to uphold democracy and fairness cannot be restored as long as those who hold power to expose corruption are themselves complicit in it. The challenge lies in reforming not just the political and legal structure, but also the institutions of education and journalism. 
that have the capacity to shape public opinion and influence change. Until those with power to inform and educate the masses to take a stand for truth, the corrupt will continue to manipulate the system to their advantage and the common citizen will be left to suffer the consequences. So that's what I think I've been fighting for. I be tell you, you know, it's not the blicker boy that we have fire gun you know, in a Jamaica problem. My people, they are educated people. Them, they are the ones that corrupt the system. Them don't want the system. If them don't want the system change, you know, no Jamaican for justice, no um, national integrity agency. All of them things are for protect criminals. Nothing there for change it for make it. it them not even want Jamaica to be a crime-free country. Because them support the criminals, because at them benefit from it. Like in this case, so it got, in this case, it benefits because Patrick Powell, it serves him well. So that's why he have to have a corrupt system. So when those who don't want a corrupt system, that's why they don't appoint uh, MacArthur Sutherland as the Commissioner of Police. Because MacArthur Sutherland, nobody could control him and tell him what to do. That's why they get rid of George Quiller, we don't know. You understand? We don't know George Quiller, we don't know GQ, we don't know him as no hard working police. They were you know, paper tiger. I know that too. So. We can't rate all the man. We don't rate him and them things. The reason being, um, when them charge Francis Fabs, well, all of them march go up by half a tree quarter, a different man will commit a crime. You know, you can't do that. That for sure you said these are people from them like you. They may split justice and them things. Not because, I have nothing against James Swan, but James Swan did break the law. I just saw it go. You understand? He did. And the policeman will give evidence against him. Them, sabotage him, they make certain that him retire as a sergeant, no promotion. So when a guy come talk about say, uh, boy, you know like the Prime Minister. Um yeah, or, you know if, you, you know fund him. If the Prime Minister is a man where you no know, believe in a corruption, him will make certain say. Fim Commissioner of Police, yeah man, Major Anthony Anderson, promote Hubert Lowell in. But that's why I would tell you say, all of them one is just a little bit better than the other. So enough people don't understand in time I have said certain, some things, you know. I say it from my heart because I believe it. I mean, it's true. So Sir Porter's message is a call to action for all Jamaicans to hold these institutions accountable and to demand more from those who claim to represent their interests. It's a call to reject the complacency that allow corruption to thrive and to question the narratives that are fed to us by those in power. True change can only come when people refuse to be silent, when they hold not only their leaders, but also the gatekeepers of information to the highest standard of truth and integrity. When we are going to get back to country, and we have to just fight back faith. So have yourself a beautiful day. Jamaica, Young Police Channel, out.